This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. Oh yeah, hi everybody, wait a minute, hold on a second, here I am, okay, oh boy, uh, how are you, good to see you, let me just uh, put my microphone here, and I think we're okay, I think we're doing alright, I'm hoping we're doing alright, let me just make a few little, no that's fine, there, there we go, well anyway, um, hi I'm Alex Bennett, and this is the ramble, and uh, I. The reason we're on late. Let me explain. Let me explain something to you. See this? This is the keyboard I normally use. Uh, I just pulled it out of service. You know why? Because b- earlier tonight, before I did the show, uh, I uh, spilled an entire glass of Coca-Cola all over this table, and I knew something was going to go wrong. And what turned out was this is what went went wrong. And it's, it's got some liquid in it, and uh, hopefully when it dries out, I'll be, able to, uh, I'll be able to use it. If not, I'll have to run out and buy another one somewhere and figure out how to get that working. Anyway, this is just, it's, uh, it's an amazing world I live in, and it's one thing after another. And I, then I had this one, but I can't find the uh, Bluetooth to it, so I have no idea how to make that work. And uh, we're, uh, we're, we're off and running. Anyway, that's, uh, so we were late getting on, not, not by too much. I mean, I had a lot I had to do. I had to reboot the machine. I had to, I'm using this keyboard, which takes up too much room, too much real estate, as it were, in my desk. And uh, so, um, but I'll have to live with it for the time being. And, uh, you know, it'll 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 work okay. So I'm not I'm not worried about it. Uh, and uh, we got everything going. We're recording the show. And uh, uh, Damien, uh, thank you so much for your program each and every night here. We have uh, loved having you do it, and we certainly will continue to want to see you do it more next year. Um, hold on a second. I'm trying to get some things going here. Um, I'm. Uh, just uh, screwed up here. Hold on. I just, just, how do I, oh, I, yeah, I hate, you know, I'm using, um, I'm testing the program by, oh, God damn you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, Safari here, and it's really fucked up. Uh, I tell you, I, I, I did something last night. I We had a problem that we put up a new, uh, thing on our on our site, uh, which w- was actually in a way an improvement, and and that was that in order to get everything to work, I decided that what I would do is I would take the the um, signal I'm, I'm, and I'm using, oh, oh hold on a second, uh, see I did, always something here. I have to do to and change things up here. Let's cut that out. Okay. Anyway, the, the thing at the top that says tune in and, you know, you click on that and it will allow you to listen to the program pretty well uninterrupted. When we go to the next show, it's still pretty much uninterrupted. Um, so I, I, I put that up there and uh, it worked really well until somebody phoned me up in last night and said, you know, when you're using uh, um, uh, Safari, it, it doesn't work. What? It doesn't work? I tried it. And sure enough, it doesn't work. So I had to put a new thing on the on the site that says if you have Safari, click here and it goes directly to the file and and starts playing the twenty four seven audio. Why? Because Safari doesn't run in the same way that uh, Chrome works. And then I go over to uh, Microsoft Edge and you know I've got that countdown thing that says oh hey we have so many minutes, so many hours until the next program and then Gabnet is live comes on when we go live. Well, I went over last night and I tried that, okay, uh, Edge, and it always says Gabnet is live. The thing doesn't have the countdown clock on it. Different system, right? Uh, and then when I try to play that thing that I said on, on the Safari to play it, it opens up this big window, whereas on 
uh, Chrome, it opens up a tiny little window, and on Safari, a tiny little window up in the corner. Uh, you know, each browser is different from the other browser, and it sucks. <laughs> okay, it just sucks. And it makes it very difficult for somebody like me to do stuff. And I just wish everybody would get their shit together and all agree on a certain kind of protocol. But every one of them, because they're competing with each other, try to do something that negates what the other does. So I have to program now for several different browsers. And uh, I mean, I, I don't really care about Microsoft Edge. You probably never even heard of it, okay? And I don't really care that much about Safari because unless you're a Mac user who doesn't know better, you're not using Chrome. The majority of the people in this world right now use Chrome, okay? And uh, it, it, every time I look at it and program it and so on, I program it for, pro, for Chrome. What can I say? It's my way of doing things. Anyway, so that's, uh, so tonight I go on the air and, you know, on top of everything else, I get stuff in my in my keyboard and I push one button and it, it makes up I can't type with it right now now it may dry out and then it'll be just fine right but right now it's too wet to work so we'll just uh, we'll we'll hope it hope it dries out I wish I had a hair dryer then I could do a hair dryer thing with it you know but I have a keyboard I went the other room I forgot another keyboard out plugged it in we're, we're up and working and uh, hi there how are you so anyway uh, let me um, let me first of all say that this is our last show of the year. Wouldn't you know, it would fuck up and not go on on time. But we got on, so that's all that matters. All right? Uh, and I did it pretty fast, too. I have to... What's the thing we used to do? What, what did we do that for? Like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm misting my nails or something. Anyway... Uh, I, uh, I was very happy that I was able to solve it that fast at this age. Everything at this age. Um, but anyway, um, I started off today with getting up and, and I'm sleeping in the guest room because girlfriend has been really sick. That's why she's not here tonight, uh, you see. I mean, I mean we would uh, be happy to show you, uh, show you her, uh, but uh, uh, she's, uh, she's not there. She's not there at all. She's just somewhere else. Anyway, she's in the way. She's in the uh, she's in the bedroom sleeping right now. And because she's had been sick, because she coughs all night and everything, this week I've been sleeping in the guest room, which in some ways is more comfortable for me because I have certain problems with numbness in the feet and so on, and it doesn't hit my sciatic nerve as well. And yeah, yeah, yeah. old people stuff. Are you ready for that? Old people stuff. This was the kind of shit I never worried about. But anyway, so I've been sleeping in the other room. So I wake up this morning, and I said, how you doing? She says, I call the doctor. She's had this thing for almost two weeks. It was a dreadful cold, and then it just, it nothing left her. It just kept going and kept giving. And uh, I, uh, she said, I'm going to go see the doctor. Can you go with me? And I said, yes, I can go with you. You know, what am I going to do? I'm not going to go with her? No, she's my wife. I love her and I want her to be well and I'm worried about her and I don't want her to be uh, really uh, sick. And uh, I want to go. So I, we went to the doctor and the doctor said, you have a bronchial infection and uh, here are some antibiotics. Go home, take the antibiotics and, uh, you know, take two aspirin, call me in the morning or whatever they, they say, okay? So anyway... Uh, that was the uh, that was the gist of it, uh, and uh, um, you know we're pretty. We, we, she so she's better, but she well, she's not better yet. Uh, that's uh, Skype signing in. Uh, she's better now, uh, better than she was. Okay, and hopefully tomorrow she'll be better, even more. But she's she's worried that it's not going to clear up. That you know, and I'm worried it's not going to clear up too because. You know, I don't. I don't want her being sick. She's my playmate, and I and I can't play with her if she's sick. So anyway, um, uh, we are. Uh, um, so I'm trying to set everything up here that I couldn't set up because of all the stuff I had to do earlier to get the show on. Um, anyway, so I had that. That was the beginning of my day, and then of course tonight I come in and the soda spills all over the place. And uh, when I finally decide to go on with the show. Uh, the keyboard isn't working. 
So then I have to go to, I didn't realize it was just the keyboard. I thought it might be something else. And I had to turn off the computer, start it up again. This was like five minutes before we were supposed to go on the air. And, uh, and, and somehow run and get another keyboard and plug it in and, 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 and make sure it works. And uh, finally, I just, I, you know, I took my time. I just said, I'm not going to rush it. If I rush it, I'll just do something wrong. And uh, here we are. Do I sound nuts about this? Anyway, we're coming up on Christmas. And as my father used to say, and I love I loved to quote him over and over again on it, Christmas is at our throats again. Uh, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow uh, you will probably do that last minute shopping. Maybe you'll do it on Sunday. I, I always used to go the last night of uh, Christmas Eve. And I used to go down to Herald Square here in New York City. And I would run through Macy's and uh, buy all my stuff. That was it, plain and simple. Uh, and uh, uh, just run from one place to another with a credit card and say, here, here, here. I had a Macy's card. Here, here, here. And then I would go home. And then when nobody was looking, I would throw them into boxes and put a bow on them. And then I said, happy, Merry Christmas. How are you? What's happening? Mm. And every year I would buy about two or three what I called uh, uh, nebulous gifts or um uh, what would be a better term for them? What they were were gifts in case somebody shows up at your house and uh, it's on Christmas and they have a present for you, but you don't have a present for them. So what you do is you buy these gifts and you just don't put any name on them. And then when the person comes over and says, here's your gift, you run in the bed, back room and you write somebody's name on the thing and say, oh, and here, this one is for you. And they go, oh, he's so considerate. He, he actually went out and got me a gift. So that's... That's what I used to do. Um, let's see here. Uh, so uh, there is, uh, so I, uh, uh, you know, I, you, you do that at the last, I always used to do it at the last minute. Now, girlfriend and I, it's just like, here's a bunch of money, go buy what you want to. Here's a bunch of money, you go buy what you want to. Because I can't shop for her. That's the worst thing in the world. If I bought, she, I said to her, I don't buy you clothes because you might not like what I buy you. She says, well, if you don't like what you, what, you know, just buy me something and then I'll return it and get something else. And I went, well, that isn't the idea of a gift that I give you something and, you know, you, right? And she says, no, that's okay. Just get me something and I'll go turn it in for another gift. And I said, that's no fun. Here, here's the money. Just go out and buy it, okay? Um, or here, here's how much money I'm going to spend on you this year. And uh, let's go on Amazon. You find what you want and uh, I'll press the button. You know. So that's the way we do it. it we're Jewish. It, you know, I don't know why we even celebrate Christmas. Now, we, but we don't celebrate Passover either, so... Anyway, I, I, don't, I don't mind buying her a gift. But I, I, what I mind about it is I don't know what to buy her. I've run out of ideas. After I bought her two cameras, uh, 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 an iPad, uh, a couple other things. I'm, I'm always good at buying people electronics, but I don't really understand things like clothing. All right? I'm just terrible at it. So I, I, I just want you to know that. I'm a terrible human being. So that was that's Christmas. You know, I also used to get get somewhat gypped at Christmas. Uh, my parents celebrated Christmas. Not they didn't celebrate it as much as they they knew that it was something that a kid loved. Uh, they didn't throw me throw the Santa Claus myth at me and it, nothing about. We didn't have a Christmas tree or any crap like that. They considered it a holiday gift, and that if all my friends were getting holiday gifts, I should get them too. But there was one problem. My birthday was a week before. Now, if your birthday is in June and 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 uh, you get you get a whole bunch of gifts for your birthday, and then come Christmas you get a whole bunch of gifts for Christmas. But now, if your birthday is December 18th, maybe you're not going to get as many gifts, you know. And people kind of go, "Well, shall I get you a gift for your birthday or for Christmas?" I said, "Why don't you buy me a gift for both? You would get me a gift for both if it were in June, you know." So I always, I, I never felt my parents ever gypped me because when I had my birthday, I woke up in the morning, there were all these presents. And then when I woke up uh, the morning uh, uh, after Christmas Eve, there'd be another set of gifts for me there. And, and it wasn't like they, they kind of bought fewer gifts for me in each case. They bought a whole ton of gifts for me. I was a spoiled little brat. I was an only child. That's the thing I loved being, was an only child. 
You want to be an only child. My wife always says to me, well, you are an only child. And I said, you're jealous. Because when you're an only child, every gift is yours. Every kind of attention that's lavished on, on a, a little human being is lavished on you. So, you know, I'm telling you, being a, a, an only child definitely has its perks. Definitely has its perks. But anyway, I digress. So here we are, Christmas time, and um, you know, as a Jew, I don't relate to the whole, you know, baby Jesus crap. Uh, but uh, I, I still kind of celebrate it in a certain fashion because, uh, you know, I, I'll buy a gift for girlfriend. She'll buy a gift for me. People have Christmas parties, and I'll go to the Christmas parties. Uh, Although there are less Christmas parties for me to go to now that I'm not working because I don't have the office Christmas party and I don't have Bob's Christmas party who I work with and Sam's Christmas party who I work with and Laura whose Christmas party I, she has and I work with her. No, no, I, I don't have to go many places. I have one thing I go to and it's uh, my friend Mark Garland every year. He holds a, a New Year's gathering, uh, uh, not on New Year's Eve, but the week between Christmas and New Year on Friday, uh, he holds a party and uh, people come over and uh, I get to see a lot of people I haven't seen, uh, get to meet a lot of people I never knew. And sometimes it's the only time of the year where I get to sit down with uh, Gilbert Gottfried because sometimes he shows up. So, you know, it's really, it's a nice party and uh, we really... Uh, we really enjoy it, and we're looking forward to it. Uh, we're supposed to have uh, Christmas Eve with our friend uh, Jack and Natalia. Jack is the movie director and the actor's studio director and the Broadway, produce, Broadway director, the uh, concentration camp survivor. Natalia is a very talented pianist and his, uh, his lady, and she is the best, and they got a cat that's the best. And so uh, we decided what we do for New Year's, and I've never really done this, okay? I'm a Jew, but I've never done this. We're going to go out and get Chinese food on New Year's Eve. Now, every Chinese restaurant in New York is open on New Year's, uh, Christmas Eve, rather, uh, on Christmas Eve, because Jews go to get Chinese food on Christmas Eve, and they want to be open for all the Jews. Uh, and um, so well, we were going to do that, but I don't know if we can do it because girlfriend's still really sick. But I figure that by Sunday, those antibiotics are going to be really doing what they got to do, and she's going to be okay. So what the hell? Anyway, I, uh, I certainly hope that you have a, a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're taking the week off next week here at GabNet. No programming, and that's fine, and that's as it should be. And uh, then we return on January 2nd with uh, all, uh, you know, with our... our new year of programming uh same old people doing the same old thing basically uh i hope that maybe we can get some changes going next year you know and make it a uh an interesting year for all of you but uh anyway you know we're, we're just going to keep doing this until somebody pays attention to it you know that's that's the way we feel about it uh on the other hand i think it's been a pretty lousy year if you think about it uh, i mean we have we have had to suffer a president who has no respect for the office and a party who really doesn't care about America, Republican Party doesn't care about America, who's in power. And, I, you know, at this time of year, I, how a guy like Donald Trump can go down to Mar-a-Lago and uh, celebrate a holiday which is peace on earth, goodwill towards men, and he engenders none of that. Not one of those ideals. Goodwill towards men? I don't like the Islamics. Uh, we're not going to let the Mexicans in. You know, yeah, that's goodwill towards men. Peace on earth. Yeah, yeah, no, causing unrest in, uh, in the Mideast because of your stupid idea that you're going to move your uh, embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, it's just really peace on earth. Uh, good for you, you fucking... Anyway, it's been a joke. America has become, think about it, a reality show. That's all it is. Every day he's got some kind of promotion he's doing and he, you know, all of that. 
uh, it, it has been a uh, just a horrible year uh, for America, I think, and for what America was and what America should, America should be. I'm not saying could be. I'm saying what it should be because it hasn't been what it's supposed to be for a long time. But this president has put a nail in the coffin of America's humanity. And I find that just absolutely disgusting. And, uh, you know, if, if I, I can't tell you how many times I've had a bad thought about that president and wishing him the worst, like a bad cough that gets worse, I would go for that. Um, you know, I mean, I just, I, I, I can't believe that we actually, that America elected this guy. Now, I know all America didn't elect this guy. We were three million votes over what would have been everybody voting for this guy. Uh, and, and for that, I say, that's my, that's my, that's the one thing that gives me hope for America, that he didn't win the popular vote. He won by playing the Electoral College and, you know, the gerrymandering that goes on and all that crap. He played that, but he didn't win the election by the popular vote. And that gives me some hope for America because it says America didn't want this asshole. Um, so I do have a little hope for that. But it, 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 I can have all the hope I want, and I can say as many times as I want that he didn't win the election in the popular vote, but he's still president of the United States, and he's fucking us up. Uh, just wait till this whole tax thing comes home to roost. Yeah, you'll see a little more money in your paycheck. I don't know how much. Let's say they say the average person's going to get $1,200 back a year. Boy, don't spend that all in one place. Let's take $1,200 and hold, cut that down. That's, uh, that's um, $100 a month. That's 25 cents a week. Okay? No big deal. Hey, are you going willing to sell your soul for 25 cents if set $25 a week? Did I say 25 cents? $25 a week? Well, I don't think you should want to. Uh, but uh, you know, then all then then the next year everybody's going to go into their tax guy or go to H&R Block and they're going to add up the figures and you're going to say, "How come I'm paying more taxes this year and I'm not getting as much back as I got last year?" And then you're going to say, well, that $1,200 he was giving me in my paycheck is now going to taxes. And, you know, and, and then, of course, they'll do away with Medicare and they'll do away with Medicaid and they'll do away with Social Security. And uh, because and they don't care what happens to Americans. You know, they don't care what happens to old people. They don't care what happens to children. You know, some of the prime recipients of Social Security, which they've constantly tried to gut the Republicans, are children. Not adults, not and 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 of course older adults. Who paid into it? You know, as we said the last night, it's a, it's a uh, uh, earned uh, earned benefit is what it is. So you know, I just I I'm just I, I'm just sick with the way this country is right now. And I know that last night Rob Alfano, who isn't going to be in on tonight because he's on his way to New York City. Uh, said that if he was really cranky about anything, he's just this country. It's worrying him. And I think it's worrying a lot of people. You know, my friend Jack uh, Garfine, uh, who was in a concentration camp, he was in 11 of them. I never knew anybody that was in 11 concentration camps. In fact, I've hardly known anybody who was in one. And he, I asked him, I said, how do you feel about what's going on right now? And he says, it scares me. And I said, why does it scare you? He says, it reminds me of what happened once before and happened. And I was the, the negative beneficiary of that. And he was saying that what went on in Germany was no, really, it's very reminiscent now of what went on in Germany. And if you think, well, we're better than the Nazis were, you know, anybody can become a Nazi and not know they're a Nazi. Uh, they just allow things to happen and sooner, you know, uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that this president could, could absolutely start jailing people who disagree with him. It, it's, he's that way. I mean, he went, uh, they went before the UN yesterday and they uh, completely um, uh, 
you know, it, it threatened every country that didn't that voted against the United States when they did that vote against us moving our embassy into Jerusalem. There were only nine countries that voted for us. Among them, <laughs> I wonder what countries they were. And it, 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 you'd think, oh, maybe it was Canada, maybe it was uh, China, maybe it was what? No, Tonga and uh, Guatemala. <laughs> okay. So we're going to do business with Guatemala and Tonga, okay? We're building Arby's in Tonga. I don't even know where the fuck Tonga is. I know it's in the South Seas somewhere. Uh, but uh, that, that's what happened, you know, last night, uh, yesterday at the UN. And Nikki Haley gets up and she threatens. She threatens these other countries. Well, we know who you are. Don't expect any favors from us when you ask for them. Well, good, you know, that's good. Threaten countries, you know, make the world hostile towards the United States. You know, we're, we're, we're being just hated, and, and I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. That should be what we strive for. And everything we do and everything we say, you know, I'm, as I say, I'm a Jew, I'm not a big Christmas guy, but, you know, when you go, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. I think that's a wonderful sentiment for a holiday. And it's a wonderful sentiment for us to live by. And you need to do that. You really need to do that. You have to believe in peace on earth and goodwill towards men and not uh, fighting immigration of this group and, uh, uh, you know, calling Mexicans this. And uh, uh, it's just, it, I, I, I just can't believe it. And as I said, What's, become to, what's happened to America is it's now one big reality show. If you, if you don't believe it, 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 Donald Trump every day is doing The Apprentice. That's really what he's doing. Hey, uh, you know, uh, so-and-so, you don't agree with me? You're fired. He loves to use the term you're fired, too. I don't know. Call me, call me late for dinner. Anyway, <laughs> hey. Every one of you out there, thank you so much for having watched this show. The few that, of you that are out there doing it. Uh, I know I don't do as well as HQ, the trivia game, which gets 500,000 people watching it every time they go on the air. Have you seen this thing? It's a, it's a game you play. You, you get the app and you download it. And then at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, Eastern and 9 o'clock uh, at night uh, Eastern, uh, they do this trivia contest. And you sit there and you have to answer the trivia questions. And they, they have a top prize of like $1,500, right? And the top, and it, it, if you get all the way to the 10th um, uh, question and you answer it, then you split the money with anybody else, right? Okay, not a bad idea. I think one time they raised the money, they got like 10000 or something like that. But for the most part, it's 1500 But they've got this host doing it who is just horrible. And I tried playing the game the other night, and I did it for you know a couple of minutes. I got, I got blown out after three questions. Uh, but what I couldn't stand, and the reason I didn't go back, is the host. He is so annoying. He's trying to be funny. He's trying to be glib. And he really sucks. Now, these people are getting a half a million people watching every game. I would suggest that they go out and hire somebody for the big money to do the hosting on that thing. But this guy is just, he is pathetic. He is fucking pathetic. So if you've ever played HQ, lots of luck to you. Anyway, look, I'm going to go to the phones. I'm going to go to the phones. Last time this year. This last, I, I'm never, I'm never going to do this again this year, okay? I, I swear to you. It's my, my boast to all of you. By the way, while we're gone... Uh, there will be programming here. We have Christmas Eve programming of old radio programs that had to do with Christmas, and that's kind of nice. And then we got, uh, we've got, uh, oh, here, here we go. Well, I don't, I don't know that person. Who is? Oh, Lexa Pro. I see. Okay. How's it going? Hold on a second. I got to put your your thing on. I got to make sure all this is working. There we go. There we go. And there's Phil. Lexapro is actually Jason. Uh, Lex A Pro. 
Yeah, I was figuring maybe with your breakdown the other day, you might need some. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, how you guys doing? Uh, I'm happy that Trump is warm and uh, enjoying himself in Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> We should charge him an adver- We should charge him for advertising every time he says the word Mar-a-Lago to the American public. Your phone's in. Yeah. We- hey, just just to let you know, because you guys were talking about the other day with, uh, um, you know, a certain company said that they were going to give a thousand dollar bonus. Yeah. That's not normal. It's you know, no- most years we don't get nothing, and when we do get profit sharing, you know, it'll be like. You know, our biggest ones will be like four hundred dollars, but after taxes, it's like two hundred bucks. But you're with one of those companies, right? Yeah. Are you going to get the thousand dollars? Supposedly. Well, we'll no, find they, out. they they only said like three hundred thousand or something of their employees two, would get the yeah, three hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand, but that's basically yeah. all there's left. There used to be a hundred uh-huh. and eighty thousand. I think uh, this year they're laying off eighteen hundred people too. So, oh, and they're laying people know. off, but they're giving everybody a thousand dollar bonus to make it look like Trump's got a great plan going. Yeah, you know, hey, this tax cut's going to create jobs, but they're going to lay people off. Where are you going to spend the thousand bucks? I don't know. Put it in savings? Huh? I say that everybody savings. who gets a thousand bucks from any of those companies, I think GE was one of them, Comcast was another one, AT&T was another. Uh, uh, you, you, all of you guys, uh, you should just buy Coke. <laughs> <laughs> just buy Coke. Buy drugs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, Problem is running out, huh? The, the problem with Coke was always when you ran out. Yeah, you, know? you get a little cranky, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but anyway, <clears throat> so I have a. I wonder if I, I'm going to wait. I can either wait till I get off the air and see if my keyboard works because it, it got. I spilled some Coke in it, and that wouldn't work anymore. <laughs> and then I was on late tonight because I had to boot everything up again and get go get another keyboard. You're supposed work. to use a mirror, not your keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so sometimes if you let these things dry out, they they work fine. You know, now, just, is that the one with the batteries, or the older one, or do you uh, uh, this, plug it into a uh, USB cord occasionally? Wait, 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 wait a minute. I don't know who's trying to call me, but you're you're calling us on the wrong line. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, somebody's calling using last night's citizen panel. Okay. So don't That's call like using that. News. Huh? Yesterday's news. Yeah. Yesterday's news. So now, didn't someone else get, uh, accused of, um, uh, a high level person got accused of sexual assault today. Wait a minute. Uh, hey, hold on a second. I got to uh, go here to the group again. I'm sorry, everybody. I blanked them out there for a second. What? Didn't someone get accused of uh, sexual assault today, some high-level person? Uh, I, you know, it comes across my news feed, and I don't write it down. And of are, course, you, I don't are you getting it. a little tired of them, though? You know? Well, every day there's, you know, there's somebody new. Yeah. But this one uh, uh, struck me as, oh, San Francisco Symphony, the head of the San Francisco Symphony uh, was uh, accused today. Oh, really? That's what it was, oh. and uh, and just so happens that they, the FBI thwarted a terror attack. Uh, some uh, jihadist uh, was going to blow up Pier Thirty Nine. Yeah. Uh, by the and, way, William Ferguson has joined us. Bill, you've called the show before, haven't you? I have indeed, sir. Yes. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Yeah. Well, I guess you maybe. Uh, why'd you call tonight? You haven't called in a long time. I guess uh, the holiday season. You got a little free time. Yeah, I got a little free time. <laughs> got a little free time. So does everybody. Here comes Mark uh, Thorner. Hello, Mark. Happy holidays. Hey. Uh, happy, Jew, Jew, happy whatever. Yeah, Jews don't say uh, a, a happy Merry Christmas. Merry you know, Hanukkah. You know what I don't get in England? You know, they, 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 this is on sale. What? Merry Christmas, and these things are on sale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, our Lord Christ, our Savior, is born. You get fifty percent off, right? You know, <laughs> uh, you, you you know what I love. Uh, I, I honestly, I saw this. I don't know if anybody has the guts to do it anymore, but I actually saw a Martin Luther King Day sale. You know, with a mountaintop, <laughs> with a mountaintop of savings. 
Hey, you know, that would go over well in Harlem. Uh, I don't even think they celebrate it in Arizona. Is that oh. a state that doesn't have Martin Luther King Day? Uh, they don't have uh, Martin Luther King Day. Well, they do now. Uh, they, oh, yeah, what happened? Uh, they, they kicked out Meacham after he, after he decided he wasn't going to um, celebrate Martin Luther King Day in Arizona. So they voted him out. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know. So, uh, uh, what, Mark, what do you do on Christmas? I mean, you know, we gotta, we, we really shouldn't put turn out, give out the secrets of what Jews do on Christmas. But while what everybody mean, else is, is home celebrating, we're out keeping, having Chinese, having Chinese, yes. going, going yeah. to see a movie and having Chinese. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A friend of mine, Jewish friend of mine, had a Chinese girlfriend, and he says uh, it was Sunday. He says, "Hey, let's go out for chinks." She was not happy. <laughs> Yeah, that was a term that, well, you know, you know what it is, that term, un unfortunately, or fortunately, as the case may be, when somebody yeah. said, let's go out for chinks, they weren't being racist. They, that was just the term they knew, you know, right. it didn't, it, it didn't think that that was a derogatory term for, uh, for, for an Asian person. Uh, 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 Jason has hand up and then Mike. Yes, Jason. Do you, do you ever watch the show? It's the detour. It's that Jason, uh, what's his name, who was from The Daily Show? Jason, he was from The Daily yeah, Show. I, I, his I, wife, uh, Samantha B. Oh yeah, right, right. So he has his own TV show called The Detour. Is that Jason? Jo it, is it Jones? Might be. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's uh, he was out to a restaurant with his family, and it was like some um, medieval times themed restaurant, and there's like jousting some guy who's in dressed in armor, head to toe, you know, with a face mask on and everything. And he said something about there's a chink in the armor <laughs> and the guy rips off his helmet and he's aged and he's like, what's your problem, man? <laughs> that was so funny. Well, uh, uh, there's a, there, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, there's an old song I have, but I can't play it, uh, called Mr. Wu's a window cleaner now by, uh, what's his name? Oh, God, my mind's a blank now. British uh, music hall guy. And he, he uses that word in that song. He said, uh, you know, uh, beware if there's a chink in your window, there's a, something out your door or whatever. And, uh, you know, but the, the, the word, it's, you know, I often said about words like that, even, even kike and uh, even the, the N-word, which I'm not going to say, but everybody knows what the N-word is. Let's all say it together. Not you. Everybody out there watching. See? So, what is it? <laughs> it's the N-word. Nixon. Anyway, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's how you use it and why you use it and the, the emphasis behind it. And if you mean it to hurt, then it's terrible. If, you're, if you mean it because, hey, that's just how you describe something, you know. Uh, yes, uh, uh, first uh, uh, Mike and, and, and then uh, Mr. Ferguson. You know, the other word also for Chinese they used to use is gook. No, they use that for Vietnamese. And Koreans. And Koreans? Yeah. And Koreans? Yeah. Koreans? Oh, okay. What about? Well, gook wasn't meant to be a nice term. It was being no. used, no. As, it was being used in a, as a nasty term. Neither was right. to dehumanize your enemy. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, was, well, it was like during World War II, it was perfectly proper to call Japanese Japs, you know, or Nips, Nips, but basically Japs. Except for Nippon, yeah, you know, instead of Nippon, yeah. Nippon, I yeah. guess. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. the uh, what's his name has his, uh, JW has his hand up. Yeah, I'm, I was just about ready to go to Mr. Ferguson. Hello, Bill. Yes, uh, George Formby. This is the man you were George trying to Formby, remember. George Formby, exactly. Yeah. Is he the guy that refinishes furniture? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like him. Yeah, uh, Formby's, uh, he's got some goop. Yeah, there was, there on, was a Formby's uh, something, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, um, but this time of the year, is a, it's always been a strange thing for me as, as, a, as a Jew. And I was brought up in California, so I wasn't brought up as a Jew. Yeah. You know, like, if you come from New York, you're from New York, right, Mark? Yes. You're a Jew, you know. It's a whole thing to being a Jew in New York. But in California, being a Jew is uh, an, that person down the street who has an odd religion. Why don't we invite him over and see if we can make him eat pork? 
Yeah. You know, and, and and touch his head to see if we can find the horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I actually had people in California when I was growing up say I never met a Jew before in my life. Yeah. Oh no. shit. Uh, yeah. I've never been, been to L.A. Have we? <laughs> well, no. I'll tell you something. When actually, I was growing up, I never met a when, Jew like when, you. When I was growing up, you had to actually search for kosher food. You, you know, if you wanted a bagel in San Francisco, I think there was one place that made bagels. You know, can you imagine that in New York City? Was that Bagel King? You have even they had the water bagels. No, they had a bagel shop down in the. Oh God, I can't remember the district, uh, uh, but it was off of Geary Street, and uh, there was one place that made bagels. And that was it. My mother would go over and get them every now and then. And they weren't really great bagels. They weren't like great New York bagels. Right. You know, but they were bagels. They were something. You know. At Noah's, which is really bread. Noah's bagels aren't very no, well, good. Well, Noah's bagels are no. terrible. Noah's bagels were, were like, uh, they. The, these are in San Francisco, folks. Noah's bagels. And and they're like uh, uh, biscuits. They have that mm -hmm. consistency. Yeah. Uh, but well, uh, there was a place here called Bagel Nosh in New York City. And, oh, my and, God. Wait, wait a minute. And they had the worst bagels in the world. And when you go in and you go, well, I'm going to get myself a bagel. And you're in New York. You want you want a Jewish bagel, right? And then there's a Chinese guys inside <laughs> making bagels. <laughs> Same way out Am here. I right, Mark? <laughs> you I never went to that one. You know, you know, in Bay Ridge we had a couple of places, but in Manhattan it was always H and H. H. Well, H and yeah. H you went to because that's where they they supplied most of the bagels to the good delis yeah. in town. Right. And I would go there. I would get off the air at six o'clock in the morning at WPLJ, and that's when they opened up. And I would go in there and I would buy. Hot bagels. I mean, bagels that are just fresh out of the thing and hadn't had time to cool down. And then I would eat them, and then they would expand in my stomach. And then, then when I lived in, Mid in uh, Midwood, there was King's Highway Bagels, which was like the H&H &H of Brooklyn. Yeah. Don't you love this, folks? It's Christmas, and we're talking bagels. Hey. Yes, uh, Mike. Right. There's a bagel shop, almost like the one in New York. They cook their bagels like... You know, like in water. Yeah, they're water they bagels. Cook, they're cooked in water, water. and then they, then they're then they're also put in an oven. Yeah. Oh man, those things are. Every time I go to this one shop, I always have to buy at least five bagels. Why don't I feel I'm? Get, why do I feel I'm getting condescended to because I'm a Jew by Mike? <laughs> I'm gonna... but to me, to me, that those bagels are good. Yeah, yeah, and those Jews can surely make those bagels. Yes, Jeff. And then, then I Bill. Not, I, I didn't say it. I'm not going to say it. Jeff and I was I was in Sydney, Australia. Yeah. And I said, you know, we could really use a bagel. And we couldn't find any bagel place right. at, at all. Well, maybe there was some, but I, I could never find well, it. You, you, and this is before the internet and all that kind of stuff. So I said to my wife now, I says, Pam, I says, well, if you want a bagel, I'll make one. <laughs> I made the worst bagels in well, the world, but they were the best ones in Australia. Couldn't be worse than the ones. <laughs> couldn't be worse than the ones at Noah's Bagels in San Francisco. No, 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 no. they were better than that. Yeah, Bill, <laughs> Bill. Uh, growing up, uh, there was actually a kosher bagel shop down the street from where I lived in your favorite town, Fremont, California. Yeah. Oh boy, that's the home of bagels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it was Lush. bagels. Was that Wong's? No, it wasn't Wong's. It was actually run by a, a, Jew, a Jewish guy, Lock Schmier, the whole nine yards. Well, you, the problem is that, like, when I grew up in California, as I say, I didn't really go, grow up Jewish. Uh, my parents were Jewish, and they, they told me about all the Jewish stuff, and we, we did uh, stuff that was Jewish, you know. But they weren't religious people, and uh, I was living in a place that was deprived of Jews. We had, in Marin County, California— a place called the Jewish Community Center, which was a... Is that the same one they got now in San Rafael? Yes, but not the same one. What, what they had in the beginning, it was a building. It was yeah. just like a house almost that they had turned into the Jewish Community Center. And there was something like 40 families, and that was it, in all of Marin who were Jewish. Wow. You know, so, I mean, you know, I... I, you know, I, 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 I I had my share of uh, being called a kike, 
You know, when I had my George share of Jew went boy. Up to Marin, there weren't forty. There weren't forty families in Marin, Jewish or not. No, no, there were a lot of families. When, I, when, 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 when I moved, 35. when I moved to San San Anselmo, uh, it yeah. was getting packed with people because a lot of people. That was right after the war, and a lot of people were leaving the cities and going to the suburbs. And Marin County was one of the big suburbs. Yeah. You know. Uh, but I when uh, houses in San, but San when, Anselmo were inexpensive. Yeah, I had my bar mitzvah was a double bar mitzvah. Yeah, because they only did them like twice a year. It was a double bar mitzvah. My, my me and my friend Bob Margoliash. Oh, um, that sucked. <laughs> hey, did you sing your Torah portion? Uh, I, 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 you know something. I, I went to a guy every every week. My parents would send me to to Fairfax to this old Jewish guy, who was preparing me for my bar mitzvah. And he, I can't remember what he was trying to teach me, but I was a very bad learner. He was trying to teach me Hebrew and how to read Hebrew. And I'm sorry, I can't read Hebrew. I couldn't master it. So when it came time for my uh, my bar mitzvah, as I read the Torah, they were whispering the words in my ear. You know, I, can, I, I yeah. Yes, uh, Jason. So in Israel, do they speak Hebrew or do they speak Yiddish? No, Hebrew. they don't allow Yid, they don't allow Yiddish to be used. Uh, uh, really? Yes. I figure since most of them came from Europe anyway, they probably spoke Yiddish. Uh, there's a there's a there's a reason for that. It's one of the reasons I hate Israel. Uh, because they came from Europe? No, no. Yiddish Yiddish to begin with is an actual language. Whatever anybody wants to say, oh, they think yeah. it's like a bastardized Hebrew this or whatever. German Ebonics, isn't what? it? No, no. Here, no. Here, no. Here's how you That's know. What I heard, Here's heard. how you define a language. If a language has literature and art in that language, it is a language, and boy, there is. Boy, does it have it! And boy, does it have uh, literature. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, it. Um, Israel, Israel is full, a, uh, full of uh, Israel is full of uh, you know um, Zionists, and the Zionists were opposed politically by a group called uh, the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund, and uh, in fact, the uprising in the Warsaw Ghetto wasn't the Zionists as they would like to say in revisionist history. It was actually. Uh, initiated Bund. by the Jewish Socialist Bund, and they didn't—they hated the Jewish Socialist Bund so much that when they finally started Israel, they wouldn't allow it to be used as a language in Israel, or you know, uh, you couldn't publish in it. Uh, you couldn't. Uh, I think you could speak it. They can't stop people from speaking whatever they're going to speak, but uh, it was—it was really frowned upon because it was the language of the opponent. My great grandmother only spoke Yiddish, and my mother used to speak to her well, in Yiddish. My parents, I, I would, I'd probably be speaking Yiddish right now if it wasn't that my parents used Yiddish, so I wouldn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> and so uh, they your wanted. Wife, to, Susan, uh -huh. didn't she speak Yiddish? She was in the uh, Yiddish theater. Yes, my my uh, wife Susan, third wife, uh, spoke perfect Yiddish. As a matter of fact, um, I I went somewhere with her, and she used the Yiddish. And they said to her, uh, that's great. She said, we can't tell you're an American with that, you know, because her parents, her father was a member of the Jewish Socialist Bund and probably would have been the first prime minister of Israel if he wasn't a member of the Bund and he wanted to go over to the dark side of the Zionists. And um, uh, it, it uh, uh, he, um, uh, you know, it was, it was really... Uh, uh, spoke perfect Yiddish, uh, uh, the family spoke Yiddish, and, and so my wife grew up speaking not only Yiddish, but perfect French as well, because her mother was French. So she was very bilingual. Oh, was she bilingual. Uh, but, you know, um, yeah. yes, uh, Jeff? Yeah, my wife is a good Christian from Connecticut, mm -hmm. went to Israel and in a kibbutz and lived there, I think, for about six months. Mm -hmm. And she learned Hebrew. Yep. Yeah. And and now she can my, have, now she can be my bo Yiddish. now she can be boss mitzvah. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. went to a I went to a conservative temple until I was in third grade, and I was pretty much mastering 
uh, not mastering, but I, I had a command of Hebrew. Then they took me out of there, and we went to the Reform Temple, and I, I could only use transliteration. I, there was no way, that, and I had a tutor like you did, and there was no way I was going to get through it without that tutor. Right, exactly. Bill, <coughs> when I was talking about Israel, you were agreeing with what I was saying. You know, you know the story about the Bund and so on. Well, I learned that from you, Uncle Alex. Oh, oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to tell you the history that Israel won't, you know. Um, You've talked about this many times before, well, I, as long, for as long as I can remember. I'll tell you, I went to, uh, uh, we would, they would have a, pa a Passover dinner at my uh, father-in-law's place. And he would invite all his Bundist friends with, to, to it. And these were people who were also in the Jewish Socialist Bund during the Holocaust. And they escaped various places or fought with the underground. And I, I met this woman there. She had to be in her, maybe in her 70s by then, uh, who had actually fought in the underground in France. Uh, and just brave people telling these stories about what they had done and how they managed to get people out of, it, out of, out of Germany, how they managed to get people out of France, how they managed to get out of France. My mother-in-law and her family fled France and uh, went to Spain because Franco would take Jews yes. who wanted, well, to, wanted to leave. Y yes, Mark. Um, my mom and dad met someone who worked for Franco, and he swore that Franco and his family were crypto Jews. Crypto Jews? What do you mean by that exactly? Hidden Jews. Hidden Jews. Well, he met Hitler at the at the outset of World War II said, "I want to get rid of the Jews in in uh, Germany, and I will give as many Jews as any country is willing to take." And Franco said, "Send me a million. Now, when he said to the Jews when they got there, "I would appreciate it if you would leave as soon as possible because we can't take this kind of crush into our into our economy." But, uh, and he saved a million Jews. And I nobody could figure out why, because Franco was this absolute dictator. Weren't people making money, uh, like Perfirio Rubioso, uh, made a lot of money selling passports uh, to Jews? Well, well, let me explain that one to you, Phil. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you now about the wonderfulness is that is the United States of America. Yeah. Uh, when Hitler said that, I'll give, a million, I'll give Jew, as many Jews as any country wants to take, Guess how many the United States took? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So if you wanted to immigrate into the United States, let's say like you went to Spain on Franco's dime, and then you had to get out of there, you would go to Cuba. You would then What's pay Cuba? Batista money to get a passport that says you're Cuban. And that's how you got into the United States if you were a Is Jew. Is that how Rubioso did it? Did he do it with the Cubans? Rub or Rub did he do it with the Spanish? Rubioso, I think, is who you're talking yeah. about. No, not the Spanish didn't do that. No, I don't know. I, I, Perfirio Rubioso, I'm trying to remember who he was exactly. Uh, he was married to Barbara Hutton, and he used to drive the same car I had, the Faisal Vega. Uh, he got killed in one, actually. Uh, well, hmm. I, the point is that all I'm saying, well, what I was saying about my, about my uh, mother-in-law, is that they then said, well, you know, we left all our Jew jewels back in, I don't know, Paris. So once they were in Spain, she got back on the train. And because she didn't, she was the least Jewish looking of them, went back into France and got the family jewels and then brought them back to Spain. I mean, stories like that, and you would sit around all night hearing these stories about, you know, little fights, gun, war, war, gun fights and things like that, and just... I, I just so appreciated these people, you know, and for what they sacrificed in their lives. Uh, and the only thing that I ever have regretted in my life is I had a videotape <laughs> recorder at that time, one of the old black and white reel-to-reel -reel ones. And my wife said, why don't you interview my father or some of their friends? And I, I said, eh, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. I, 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 and I didn't, and I wish I had because we would have had a testament that would have made Steven Spielberg blush, you know. Uh, it, great stories, amazing stories. <sighs> anyway, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mike. 
Yes, Mike. Did okay. Did a lot of the Jewish people also escape to Portugal? Also, yeah, they went. Since they, it was neutral. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they did, also did, went uh, to. They also to went China. They went yeah. to China All places. Oh, yeah. I, and then why they, China? I, right. Hey, you you go where you could go. There was uh, a the boat. It was a boatload of Jews that uh, were expatriated from the concentration camp, and they were sitting off the coast of New Jersey. And I don't remember if it was Truman or uh, I think it was Truman that wouldn't let him in. Yep. yep. Roosevelt. Yep. No, Roosevelt was dead by then. I think. Yep. What year was this? Uh, I don't know what year. It could have been Roosevelt. I, but, it sounds uh, like it would be probably be Roosevelt. You know. Yeah. It was the end I of remember the, that after the camps were uh, 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 you were got, cleared. Uh, by the way, whoever's calling right now, and I can't even tell who it is, uh, you're going to have to not call. I'm, I, I'm one of the lines from the other programs that we've done. You have to call using GabNet Live, okay, as the sign as the uh, sign in. What happens is some people, here we go, it's Tony. Wait a minute, hold on a second. No, wait a minute. He knows better. It, uh, Didn't he just he do that Tony, the other Tony, day Tony too? wait a minute, hold on a second. Tony, did did you just try to call a couple of moments ago? Yeah, Tony hit the wrong contact. You did, you hit the wrong one, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, okay. Yeah, anyway, who, was somebody who was going to say something? I thought the something? dog did it. Was somebody who was going to say something here? <laughs> somebody? Oh, yeah. so we were talking about China. Uh, I had a, a cousin uh, who was in China, and uh, I don't know how long they were there. Probably, probably took about five years after the war was over to get back to the United States. Uh, the other one is I once met a guy, and he grew in, he grew up in Germany. Mm -hmm. He told me when he was like six years old he thought hitler was terrific it's a jewish guy and yeah well and there are then, people who people who think trump's terrific so you, you well, see well yeah of, that's what happened yeah. you know and, uh, the, the chinese paid american fighter pilots uh, to fight the Japanese, but my friend George, his father spent several years in a Chinese prison. He was living in China, it might have been in the 30s, when uh, he was buying fabric. Uh, his father, uh, his grandfather, or George's grandfather, owned a tablecloth manufacturing company. And so his father, Elias, ended up, uh, they, they arrested him, and, uh, and he spent at least a year, maybe five, in a prison. And uh, and then he was released. But my friend Ray Crust, his father was a flying tiger, and uh, he 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 made money being paid by the Chinese government to fight Japanese. Wow. Uh, you know, because mm -hmm. they needed fighter pilots. Yeah. Well, well, what's the place that Rob's wife is from? Uh, Philippines. <laughs> Philippines. Philippines. So there was a whole bunch of Jews who went to the Philippines too. I think they went anywhere where they could get in. <laughs> Uh, you know? and, and Argentina was a very popular place Argentina too. was very popular and then became very right. popular with Nazis so it's you know, <laughs> that's right uh, now it's Florida Paraguay yeah just but, like Michigan you got all the but, uh, different sects moving in of the Arabs who don't get along over in the Middle East you know so I mean it, it, it it's just uh, you know it, it's interesting it, it, in the case of China however China was in the midst of having kind of warlike problems because the Japanese were trying to take over China. Right, uh, and that's when Ray Crust's father yeah. uh, flew a, a flying tiger. Yeah. And I guess they were some sort of elite, but they, they were uh, basically, uh, what, what do they call those guys that get paid? Mercenaries. Mercenaries, yeah. 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 Really? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think money. if I'm correct, uh, Philippine got uh, the Japanese people came to take over that uh, some of their islands. Yes, this one was it Mindanao, Luzon. Oh, Luzon. Is Luzon an island? I know it's right near Manila. Three. Uh, the Philippines is actually three islands. It's Luzon in the north. There's uh, Mindanao in the middle, and then uh, uh, and then uh, oh, Visayas in the middle, and Mindanao to the south. 
And Mindanao is the one that's predominantly Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, except, uh, who's the president of uh, Duarte? Uh, he's yeah. supposedly uh, uh, gone in there and routed out the ISIS uh, sympathizers. By the way, we're missing a caller tonight because Santa Claus said he was going to call tonight. Yeah. Well, he's still putting his beard on. <laughs> No, no, Santa Claus said he was going to call. Where are you, Santa? Yeah, it was nice when I believed in Santa Claus. I used to get excited. Hey, Tony, <laughs> I thought you still did. My sister showed me one time. She showed me the president of the mother's bed. That ruined it. Then, really. You know what? I always oh. thought my parents never lied to me about that. They never told me there was a Santa Claus, right? And, and I was happy because every kid I ever knew who found out suddenly one day is they would have to find out that there wasn't a fucking Santa Claus uh, went into such a dis despair and, and such a depression that no kid should have to suffer that. I was upset. Really. I never got my car to tell me. I, I have a friend. You know, I, I, I'm wondering if there's some kid out there who, who, like, when he was a kid, his parents told him about Santa Claus and that now he's in his 60s and he still believes in Santa Claus. I wonder if there is that guy. I mean, just oh, like, there, has, there just, has to be people still believe in God. There was just like there were I Japanese who, who refused to accept the fact that the war was over and believed it was still on well into the 70s. This friend of mine, for his kids, what he did was he had such an elaborate deal uh, he and a bunch of other friends dressed like Santa, and they went up on neighbors' rooftops. That's kind of scary. I'd be a little scared. They had this all planned out, and his kids are out there, and he says, oh, look, there's Santa. And he's on that rooftop, and oh, wow, he's he's over there now. Wait, and so they really believed it. I never would have seen him in my yard. That would be nice. And and it, it, that it's kind of lie is terrible to tell kids, because someday they're going to find out it isn't true. Well, yeah. my sister told me, because I was getting like a book. Jason, paper. Jason. My parents were good. They uh, they got a guy that my dad worked with, and he was hiding in our upstairs. So, you know, we're all down in the living room, and I'm a little kid, and I hear this thump, 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 thump coming down the stairs. The door opens up, here's Santa Claus, busts out in my house. You know, he didn't come from inside or, any, or from outside, didn't knock on the door or nothing. He's already in my house. It's like, holy crap, man. That had Jim, me believing for probably another couple of years after that. Wow. You were 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was about six years old. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I was saying earlier that I think the nicest thing about Christmas, and, you know, I, 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 I don't find Christmas the best holiday. I like Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving yeah. Yeah. It has a great feel to it, you know, and it's, its purpose and its reason for existence, its raison d'etre, uh, is, uh, is, a, is a noble one. But I just, I always wondered <laughs> it's about... It's noble, like the uh, Europeans yeah. killed the Indians. <laughs> oh, well, no, no, we're not celebrating the Indians in this particular <laughs> case. You know, we're celebrating, we're just saying, hey, it's time to just slow down for a second and just give thanks for what you do have, you know, for the good things in your life. Because the rest of the and world is so miserable, let's be thankful for that. Christmas, absolutely. on the other hand, became such a commercial experience that, you know, you begin to wonder whether it was, uh, whether it was worth it you know uh and people go out and they get ulcers over christmas and they get agitated and they're fighting for the biggest uh, get, you know doll of the season and then at some uh, toys r us and it's just it gets <laughs> ugly but there is one sentiment in it all that i think is a wonderful sentiment and that is peace on earth goodwill towards men and towards it's funny that back. we have a president who engenders none of that He's right, you're right. But you could say, Happy Merry Christmas. Yes, Happy. Jason. So that, that's a, was a conversation in my work the other day was about how uh, Muslims and Jewish people, why are they, you know, taking the day off of work along with the Christians for Christmas? And I, I stood up to him like, dude, I'm atheist. I still celebrate Christmas. And they're like, how could you celebrate Christmas if you're an atheist? I'm like, you know, it's well, about you Santa see, Claus. We take the Jewish holidays you know? off because it's it's our holiday. We have to take it off, especially. Well, and that's, yeah. that's the only thing. Is, well, wait this a minute, is wait a just... minute. But, but the thing is, the thing is that you force us to take Christmas off. So we take it off. You know, they, they you, close, you close the place of business. I'll tell you what I used to do. I'll tell you this, Jason. This is absolutely true. I would work at a radio station. And radio stations go 24-7, 365 days a year. And when it came to Christmas, if, it, if somebody had to work and they had a family 
I offered to work for them, saying, I'm Jewish. I don't need to celebrate it. You need to be with your family. And so I would always work, if I had to, Christmas in order to make sure that somebody else didn't come in and have to work on Christmas. Well, at this point in time in our society, this is just the religion de jour of celebrating the winter solstice. Because every religion throughout the history of humanity has celebrated the winter solstice with lights. How we light up our Christmas tree, we put up Christmas decorations. It's all about celebrating. And we, you know, all religions and everybody always exchange gifts around this time of year because it's like this is our hardest point of the year. If we can make it past this, we're good. You know, yeah. and, and it's just, it's the religion de jour right now of Christianity and Jesus' birth, and which, you know, with the Christmas tree is taken from the pagans. It's a pagan holiday that more of of Christmas is more of a pagan holiday that we celebrate right now. We yeah. just call it uh, Christianity. Uh, William? Well, I was just about to say that Christmas is not about Jesus. It was actually originally a pagan holiday. But, yeah, you, you well, chimed in with that one. Well, you know yeah, what? It's the no, shortest you, day of the year. They would always burn a, uh, evergreen well, well, on here, the top here, of the here, hill. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. Most <clears> uh, uh, there were, there were pagan holidays. There were Jewish holidays. When Christianity came along, they wanted something that replaced these things because they didn't want to give up the holiday, but they needed to Christian make it Christian. So, you know, Christ wasn't born in December. It was, if he lived at all, he was born in something like March. But, hey, you're right. There were certain holidays this time of the year, winter solstice, things like that. And so they just simply said, okay, well, we'll replace that with this, and we'll replace it. Passover is right near Easter every year, you know. That's how you would indoctrinate the the people you just conquered to try to adopt your religion was by altering your religion to theirs also to indoctrinate them into yeah, your own. Yeah, that ba basically is what happened. So, you know. Uh, but uh, it's it's all just religion. If Phil gave me a dirty look when I said that we have a president who does not engender peace on earth and goodwill towards men. How, how do you figure I'm wrong, Phil? Uh, he has goodwill towards women. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, Phil. Oh. If he Man, had Christmas, good... let me grab you by the pussy. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. hey, you know, getting Jerusalem to be the capital, you know, these going well, see, back I, to here's, what, here's what I don't understand, okay? <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong on this, but why <laughs> is it that these people who are professing that they're great Christians and are congressmen and senators are professing things that have a absolutely unchristian attitude about them? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not I'm not Christian, so I'm not telling you how to be a Christian. But I don't think that taking like health care away from kids is necessarily a Christian ideal. William. Oh, he's 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 doing the money sign for those who are listening to us on the audio only. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Alex. Uh, my wife's a Christian and uh, she has nothing to do with Trump. That's a shame. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you like I remember uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, oh, the, 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 the senator who uh, who finally was disgraced in uh, in Congress and had to leave, and then he ran for president again this year, and he was backing Trump. Newt Gingrich. Oh, uh, I was I was interviewing uh. I, I interviewed Newt Gingrich on one occasion, and we got along okay, and I did that because I wanted to. Make sure he came back for a second helping, and then I could get him. Wasn't uh, Newt Gingrich disgraced because he was selling books? I can't remember. He was disgraced yeah. because he divorced his wife while she was in the that hospital dying of too. cancer. Cancer. So he, he, yeah. was, uh, oh, he was impeaching the president. Uh, they, they did something. It was because he was selling his book or something, and there it, it, it was something illegal about well, it at the time. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Why, isn't there some law against promoting your cheesy hotel when you're president? Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 the thing is that uh, uh, he, uh, I brought him back the second time, and I said to him, I threw this question out at him towards the end because you never do it during the beginning. You don't want the guy to walk out on you, right? Then you got no interview. And I said, uh, let me ask you one last question. I said, uh, you go on all those Sunday programs. He says, yeah. I said, isn't uh, 
isn't that your day of, of, of religious uh, observance? I mean, shouldn't you not go to, a, to work on Sunday? And he went, well, I go to church first. And I said, no, wait a minute. If I'm not mistaken, it's prescribed as a day of rest by the Lord. I said, and yet you show up on all these talk shows. I said, Schumer never shows up on a talk show on Saturday or Friday night. But you show up on them. Uh, he, he goes on those Sunday shows, but so do you. And he didn't have an answer for me. And that's what I'm saying. That's the duplicity. That's the unchristian-like ethic, as it were. Yes, Jason. So uh, this is a little bit different, but it, along the same thing of Christian values, you know how Hobby Lobby has argued that it's against their Christian beliefs to per, uh, be able to provide birth control to women? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... In the Bible, because, you know, I'm an atheist, but I did grow up as, you know, religious, and I did read a, the, probably the majority of the Bible. In the Bible, it says that God gave man, individual man, free will. So I have the own, my own free will to sin or to not sin. It doesn't give corporations free will to make those decisions for me. So, you know, that, that should be the argument that the Supreme Court or whoever should come up with and say, listen, you say that's your religious belief, but actually your religion actually says gives man free will. It doesn't give you free will to make these decisions for people. You're not better than God. God yeah. doesn't make these decisions for them. It allows the individual to make the decision for themselves. That's so right. why are you sitting there saying you're better than God? Yeah. Well, you know, all I'm saying is, is that I, I don't understand how, how, how these people can pr profess to be Christians especially like a guy like Mike Pence, who, you know, just is so, he's toxic uh, religious, okay? And, and then at the, on the other end of the spectrum, he acts in unchristian-like ways. His of attitude course. towards gays is an example. Jesus would have, would have forgiven gays, even if you think it's a bad thing. You, you say, I love all mankind, you know? I embrace all mankind. I don't, I don't want to touch his dick. But I embrace all mankind. Well, and look at Jesus. He hung out with the people who stole, and he hung out with prostitutes, and he hung out with these people because, you know, he did forgive them or whatever according uh, to the I, religious I, beliefs. I, you know, how, Have you ever thought maybe that he was gay? You sure liked yeah. hanging out with those guys. Yeah. yeah, but he had Mary Magdalene, his prostitute, that he, you know, supposedly had kids with too. Yeah. Uh, yes, William. I remember that old Sam Kennison skit. It's like why Jesus was never married. They said, well, he takes off on a Friday night. With 12 Wait a You're breaking up a little bit. Hold on a second. Just doesn't come back till Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you? Okay. Well, he said, yeah, he takes off on a Friday with 12 guys. Yeah. He <laughs> doesn't come back till Sunday. She's like, well, where have you been for three days, Mr. Winemaker? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's our special guest, I'm sure. Hold on a second till the video comes up on him. <laughs> there he is, ladies and gentlemen. It's Santa Claus. Oh. Oh, huh? There he is. Wait a let me let me put you full screen so everybody can see you. Look, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on. Let me watch the sit on his knee and ask for his presence. I still got, I'm still waiting for my gear from 79. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys were talking shit a few minutes ago, so you're all screwed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we... we well, I, got, I got somebody to sit on my lap. Come on, babe. No, jeez. Come sit on my lap. We'll talk about the first thing that pops uh, yeah, up. Yeah, okay. Oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, wait a minute, let me let me once again go to full screen on that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Uh, uh, that is, you know, we have a, a, we have kitted Kevin for the better part of a year that you know he'd make a great Santa, and it turns out that he actually, at this time of the year, makes a living being Santa. He's and, the real. And good money once a, once a year. Once a year. And 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 <laughs> don't forget to send me a bill, and we'll pay you off in gabnet bucks. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's, there's that's, my chair. Yeah, there's my chair. That's chair. 
Yeah, the Oops. empty the empty chair. So cold. Yeah. I missed it. You, you know. need a better beer, Jason. Well, I'll tell you what makes you so authentic. I mean, you're the most authentic Santa I've seen. To be very honest with you, to begin with your tree, your your cheeks are like cherries, a bowl full of cherries. Uh, yes, Santa. The, the beard, pull, pull on it. It, it it that is an absolutely real beard. <laughs> You know, this is this is something where David Letterman is missing a good bet this year. What's that? It, it, David Letterman's missing a good bet this year. <laughs> but instead of looking like Santa Claus, he looks like a derelict. Yeah, <laughs> he is. Needs a little bit more uh, white in it, I think. It was it? Well, no, he does have white. That looks good. Now, do you walk yeah. down the street wearing that sometimes? You hit the lick of that coat. It's pushing it back. Now, is that your own Santa suit? Yeah. Yeah, you own that Santa suit. So you have Santa yeah. suit will travel. Some guys have <laughs> yeah. tuxedos. Some guys Can have Can he Santa give suits. Phil Cole, Alex? What? Can Santa give Phil Cole for us? <laughs> I uh, <laughs> put <lined up laughs> my motorcycle on it with it on and uh, rode the front of fire trucks and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, let me ask you this. Did you have the beard before you were Santa, or did you grow the beard so you could be Santa? No, it just grew, and then somebody said you should be Santa. What? Like let me ask you it why. Was actually, it yeah. was actually another one here in town, and when I was working, uh, he was a truck driver that came in and told me about how he was doing it because he had a big beard and everything. Yeah. And he goes, oh, there's a whole community and you know, we can pimp you out and the whole bit. And I said, oh, okay, oh, whatever. Some impersonators. Yeah. I mean, you, you, what happened got was the I got brought on to a job for Homes for Our Troops. Yeah. For a, a guy here in town, a sergeant that got blown up over in Afghanistan. Is that a Gary Sinise house? Um, Gary Sinise? Yeah. No. Not Wounded no. Warriors. No, not Wounded Warriors. Gary Sinise Foundation. Building for America's Bravest is what we call it. No, this is Homes for Our Troops, and uh, they came out and built a house for him. He had his legs blown off and one arm, and yeah. then had his head. What, what was the name open. of the thing at uh, the Gary Sinise Foundation uh, that built houses for what? Uh, smart houses for uh, veterans that have uh, lost three or, or four of their limbs. Yeah, yeah. But, but didn't you say it was something about who had done something? Oh, our, our, yeah, Building for America's Bravest is, is our yeah. found, it's Carpet One well, Foundation. I, I, oh, well, I think that maybe you should, oh, okay. then I think you should build a house for Melania. Yeah, um, well, <laughs> she has plenty of houses. But uh, yeah. in conjunction yeah. with Gary Sinise. Mm -hmm. We provide the yeah. floors and uh, the and the and the material. And the I know that name too. Anyway, they asked me to um, to uh, dress up one year to open up his his house and do the key ceremony and everything. So that's when it started. Wow! Wow! And then somebody called me up and said, "I'll give you 150 bucks for 20 minutes." I said, "I'll be there in well, a minute." I'm telling all the people we had quite a few people listening to us on, of course, on the on the audio channel. But I might suggest that you go over and just click on Facebook Facebook dot com forward slash a Bennett, and then you will see the video, and you will see maybe the best looking Santa I've I've seen in years. I mean, the official he, cabinet he, Santa. There are several <laughs> things about this Santa that make him exceptional. To begin with, he doesn't look grubby like most Santas, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Give me a couple hours. Your costume is <laughs> your, your outfit is clean. You know, um, right now. Yeah. yeah. You ever yeah. had a, you ever had a kid pee on your lap? <laughs> Not yet, but they <laughs> yanked. I've gotten a couple of diapers, but the you know snotty That's noses, right. and they like the little ones like to grab onto it and yank it. Uh, well, and <laughs> and if it were fake, it wouldn't hurt, but that hurts, right? Yeah, it does. But I get a kick out of it. I said, take the picture now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, R Bill. Bill, you you were gonna say something? I thought you had your hand up. No, oh no, that's he's, he's just he's just smoking. That's all. You know what's funny? You're smoking, and then so is Mike. And it, when Mike had his hand below the screen, you had your cigarette, and then there was smoke wafting up into the uh, screen right above you. Two squares, and and it looks uh, very weird. Uh, yes, uh, Jason. So here's there, Jason, a, but it, it doesn't work because you got a brown beard. Yeah, I'm, I'm the younger clause. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, there was a, 
uh, more to the Christmas story about taking um, other religions and indoctrinating them into it. You know, I think it was uh, Odin, a Viking god. He rode an eight-legged horse. So mm. how many reindeer are there? Isn't there eight ah, reindeer? Ah. And, you know, their Odin looks exactly like how Santa Claus is supposed to look like. So, you know, it's just it's funny when you learn the history about these different religions, how they indoctrinate them all into each other. Pretty soon Santa Claus is actually not going to be a religious or a Christmas story. He's going to be a god, and people bow down before Santa Claus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so Mike. A friend of mine's dad used to dress as Santa Claus, and his wife also dresses well, as I... Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Santa Claus. And that would be I Mrs. Pictures... Claus. Don't even ask why, but they did it anyway, <laughs> both of them. But they, but the way she dressed, she looked like Mrs. Santa Claus. Mrs. Santa Claus. You know, yeah. It was really, really neat, though, to see no, those two together. Kevin, does your wife ever play the elf or something? Yeah. She does? Yeah, she's got a little green suit and all that stuff. When we go to that ranch that Phil went to, I I uh, got a little selfie the printer, printer ranch. It's a little printer. Yeah. And you take pictures with the phone. Oh, I see. And you just print right to the little printer, and then five bucks later, they're gone. Five bucks oh, later, they're gone. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it's a thousand business now. No, I don't, I don't want to well, let me ask you do, you: do you make decent money this time of year doing this? You got to. I want to. Because you're a good Santa, man. You really are. I calculated out the last one about ninety-five. What? About ninety-five bucks an hour. Oh, really? Shit. But how many hours did you work? Two. No, Four. how many hours did you work? So does the IRS know about it? <laughs> I gotta go now. <laughs> <laughs> I had a customer that looked like Santa Claus, and he does the dress up to the Santa Claus, and he actually legally changed his name to Santa Claus. He showed me his driver's license. I've heard that before too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I you know, I sold him some. I don't remember what I sold him. It was probably twenty years ago, but. Uh, yeah. his, his legal name was Santa Claus. People, have often, driver's uh, license. people have often <laughs> asked me, is your legal name Alex Bennett? And I say, no, my name is Bennett Schwarzman. And they say, they always ask me the same question. Well, why didn't you just change it to Alex Bennett? And I went, because I like Bennett Schwarzman as my name. You know, I also like Alex Bennett as my show business name. And then they say, well, what if somebody writes a check out to you to Alex Bennett? And I said, I cash it. I simply endorse it, Bennett Schwarzman, and I cash it. And unless I'm committing fraud, I'm not c committing a crime at all. So what's Marjorie call you? Huh? What does Marjorie call you? Uh, Marjorie calls me uh, Alex. She calls me <laughs> Alex. I'll tell you the the, the wife I had who, who I think had the best idea. What she did was she always called me Bennett. And so when she was talking to something and saying, you know, Bennett did this and Bennett did that, it sounded like she was talking uh, talking about me using my last name. Yeah. And if if it was my mother or somebody like that, it was my first name. So it always worked out pretty well. You know, uh, if my mother, however, got a little upset once when uh, uh, somebody uh, got a hold of her and uh, uh, called her Mrs. Bennett. Um, and uh, did that on the radio. And on the radio, she called herself Ruth Bennett. Yeah, she didn't call herself Ruth Schwarzman. You're right. I didn't even stop to think about that. Hey, uh, Newt Gingrich, what was happening, the ethics issue was that he was also a college professor, and he was having people donate money to his college uh, uh, goings-on uh, and, and using it for political purposes. Ah, okay. And that's all the way down. Yeah, and that's that's where that's where he got sanctioned, and it cost him three hundred G's. Really? Yeah. Job wow. change. Yeah. Should he we all did he lose the uh, job as being a congressman? Uh, no, I I'm not sure he did. He got. Um, let me look. He retired from being a congressman. Right? He lost the position of uh, the what you may call the uh, speaker, the leader, speaker of the house. He okay. ended up stepping down and retired. Because he felt that he couldn't sit there and just be a a, a senator or whatever with, uh, you know, being that position before. So, Santa, let me name some famous names and tell me whether you're putting coal in their stocking or giving them a gift. Okay. <laughs> <Alex Bennett. laughs> 
uh, 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 Al Franken. Oh, he's getting lotion. <laughs> good answer. Yeah, very good answer. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, Mike Pence. Oh shit! What do we get him? Well, you can give him coal if you want to. Oh, yeah, coal. we can give him coal. That's too nice. I well, guess you guys would say a soul. No, well, actually, he, he wants coal. No, we... just cut the string so he's not such a puppet. <laughs> lose his string yeah um, how about Harvey Weinstein <laughs> he's going to need a oh. dildo for a long time <laughs> <laughs> oh it's been what a, what a year this has been huh do you, oh, do, you real, do you realize we only have three more years for this guy to be president <laughs> oh, maybe <laughs> you know maybe remember People that impeachment ain't that. looking so far fetched anymore. Yeah. Well, you know, as of January first, we're going to be through with this whole um, thing with the fifty percent majority. It's going to go back to what sixty percent? What was it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sixty uh, plus one in the Senate. Sixty so, plus one. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a little harder for the Republicans to get anything done or put up with any of this don't nonsense. Democrats want some pork. You know, isn't that the way things always got done in the past? And sure. so you bought t t 11 Democratic votes with uh, with pork for their... Oh, well, uh, how do you think uh, they passed this bill? They gave, they gave things to, to people. There's something that was done for in Alaska that was part of this bill. You know, by the way, it's Christmas in Dubai as well. Christmas in Dubai as well. And there, here comes uh, Bree. Although we have to see if he catches on the first time. He may have to call a second time. Yes, Jason. So did you hear that how he says this next year I'm going to work with the Democrats he's and doing, uh, you know, reconstruction or whatever. Oh, you know, he's, yeah, he's going to have He's to. actually, he says, I'm going to work, you know, and it's just ridiculous. So you're, you're basically saying you didn't even try to work with them for any of this shit this year, but next year you're going to work with them to do. Well, he's going to have to. Full house. A full house. Yes, yeah. William. I think Murkowski got Medicare expansion. Who? Uh, Murkowski of Alaska. She got Medicare. They promised her something, and then Medicare. she begged, I thought. Then they promised her something, and then uh, after the bill passed, they reneged? I don't know if they reneged, but she was promised Medicare expansion for her state. Oh, Rubio wanted something for Puerto Ricans or something. I don't know. I mean, everybody got a little something, and it, so, but a couple of the payoffs had nothing to do with uh, with taxes. <clears throat> you know, cool. well, I mean that 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 to me, if you have a bill, you, it should all it be should be all about that bill. You know, if it's about That's taxes, and, I, I, yeah, yeah. What what what, William? I was going to say, congratulations, you just shilled for the line item veto. What, yeah. what, what did I say? Wait, say that again, I didn't catch it. I said you just shilled for the line item veto, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's and that's what the Republicans want. Uh, they, uh, you know, because this way they can cut the pork out of these uh, out of these things. Yeah. And then Unless it's their pork. Then how are they going to get something like this passed? Unless it's their pork. Because they were passing out pork like crazy. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. You know, the biggest pork was uh, to the uh, to the corporations. Oh, boy, they love this. They're going to get all that money. They're going to start uh, it, to begin with. They're not going to bring all that money back from Europe because a lot of that money they're actually spending in Europe. OK, uh, uh, and, the and they're not going to they're not going to replace it with new jobs. Forget it. They're going to pay off. Uh, they're going to, you know, pay off a lot of their debt. They're going to pay off. Uh, they're going to buy back more of their company. For themselves, you know, and and Do that the trillions that they bring back to the states. The, but the trillions they bring back to the states is not going to be is not going to be put in our pockets. Hell it's no. not going to affect right us. It's going to just, just be the trillions that's going to be put in their pockets. Yeah. All you got to do is look in the sofa cushions, uh, you know, <laughs> the the, the uh, corporate sofa cushions, and uh, you'll get that money. Yeah. I mean, isn't it bad enough that GE didn't pay any taxes? I mean, come on. They got money. They got extra money and didn't pay. Yeah. 
So I mean, come on, let's let's uh, give give us a. a but they're a break. paying thirty five percent, man. Thirty five percent. Oh, by the way, we they've were been doing we, it. We were been doing it with what they've got now. So if they get anything extra, they're not going to do anything but pocket the shit. Yeah, but if they pay twenty one percent when they weren't paying anything before, uh, and because they're going to eliminate some of the loopholes that allowed them to pay nothing. Uh, Maybe it's not such a bad thing. You know, I don't. I, I, we were, we were talking. We were talking earlier about Yiddish, and I remember now that my ex-wife, who spoke perfect Yiddish, did teach me one Yiddish phrase that isn't like the normal, like "oy vey" or uh, whatever, and it's "chepitz a hook von mir." Is that crazy? And that means "get off my back." Oh, yeah. Or you can, sh she was sometimes would shorten it to chep it. You know? Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, chep it's a hook from the mirror. Hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's the only Yiddish I know, but it's enough. If I ever meet up with Trump and I want to speak Yiddish to him, I'll say chep it's a hook from the mirror. <laughs> so Susan used to yell, get off my back? That, yeah. that, that makes sense. <laughs> What, that, why does that Trump, make? Trump, what, what, I don't Trump get the I don't get the joke. Am I am I am I? Thick? No, no, no. I'm just thinking about it. You, you, she taught you one Yiddish phrase, and uh, you know I could just see her uh, saying, "Get off my back." Yeah. Well, all I know is I would I'd know Yiddish today if my parents ever decided to teach it to me. But they always had to. Once they started talking Yiddish, I knew they were talking about something they didn't want me to know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're never going to learn a language that way. That is not Berlitz, okay? That's not the way they do it at Berlitz. Berlitz. Yes, Mike. <laughs> my grandmother, when she spoke Croatian, yeah, we picked up, my brother and I picked up words, what they were saying. Yeah. But we didn't understand totally what they were saying. You could always tell them they're talking about you. No, they're talking about somebody. They're talking about their friends. Do you want to hear? You know, do you want to talk about somebody? There goes the Croatian. So did she drop a lot of words? A lot of words uh, we understood. A lot of words. Drop some kids too. Oh, he was picking up <laughs> words. <laughs> they had to drop them. Like, uh, uh, like, uh, you want to talk about somebody? You just say you poor old jackass, starting Molly Makarezzi. Poor old jackass. None of this is making sense to me. It's like, it's but then again, kidding. Mike, you never do. So I, you know. <laughs> so Mark, hey, how, what, how, what Mark is it like? Honor? What What is it like being in a place where the sun is shining and it's not snowing? Like we're gonna have snow on Christmas here. We're gonna have about eight yeah, inches of snow. Alex, it's wonderful. Yeah. I'll bet. Yeah. Hey Mark, did you that piece that's behind you? Is that some of your work, or is that something? Uh, that... Breath in Bloom County. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, it's so I understand. Is it signed? Yes. Very nice. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, 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 well, of course, all the Jew. It's it, it's it, a lot of Jews in Florida this time of year, right? Ooh. A lot of no. A, a, a lot, lot of, of what they call the, South, South Florida. The snowbirds. Oh, no. yeah. snowbirds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you know, uh, Florida is not one of my favorite places, although you live in, uh, where do you live? You live in uh, Orlando? No, where was it? No, Naples. Uh, in Naples. Nipples. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, some of those areas are, are much nicer uh, to deal with, but man, I hated Miami. God, well, did I hate it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Daniel, Hold on a second. Now. Hold on a second. We're looking out Bree's window. Wait a minute, Bree? Bree? Looks like Talk raining. to us, Bree. It looks like it's rain, like it's snowing. What is that? Hello, hello. What is, or is it? Is that is that a haboob? It's snowing in Dubai. It, We're having a white Christmas. Is it? Is it? Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. It is actually... <laughs> I think a lot of people smoke. Oh, don't tell me. It's a, it's a sandstorm, isn't it? No, this is actually... Fog. Well, I was gonna say it's yeah. fog, isn't it? Hey, Bree, yeah. You're just saying it was raining the other day. Well, it it's looks fog. like yeah, there's snow on the floor on the ground there, yeah. but I guess it's not snow. It's just... Reflection. No. I they I don't think you have too much rain uh, there. Uh, so no, but they they've been doing the cloud seeding. I see. 
so so that it yeah, will so. rain and so that you can ma make things grow and so on yeah 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 what's the temperature today I don't in know Dubai? why they what what's the temperature um, <coughs> alexa what is the temperature in dubai Right now in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, it's 66 Just, degrees with mostly off. sunny skies. Today's Why forecast is partly sunny weather with a high of 80 degrees and a low of 66 wow. degrees. That's 66. Pretty, yeah, that's pretty nice. That's pretty Alexa, nice. Alexa, tune in, Gabnet. Uh, yeah, say this. <laughs> Just say, no, watch this. Watch this. Say, Alexa, tune in, Great American Broadcast Network. Alexa. Mark's going crazy. Play the Great American Broadcast Network on tune in. Network from TuneIn. And then? Sunny skies. Today's what? forecast is partly sunny weather. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's a delay. That's a delay of 66. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That's See? Pretty nice. Alexa, tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, stop. Yeah, you see? So even, even in Dubai, you can pick up this program with your Echo. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. So did you see. Yeah. You know, I, I, you have a choice. You have a choice of things you can call it, and uh, I cho choose to call it just Echo because my name is Alex. And if anybody says Alex in the room, all of a sudden she says, "What do you want?" Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, he, yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jason. Did you see there was uh, one with Siri? Was it Siri or maybe it was Alexa that? It was having to argue with itself because I think it probably did an American accent or American uh, voice and then an English voice and it was talking about aluminum and it's sitting there arguing with itself back and forth and finally one of them told the other one to shut up. <laughs> I, listen, I got something for you. Are you there? Are you there, uh, Bree? Because Bree, are you no, there? He's gone. Oh, I think he's gone. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. no, I'm no. here. I'm, oh, I'm okay, try this just for a second, with... just so people can see how weird this is. Just say to to Alexa, Alexa, chat with me. Just say that. Sure. Alexa, <laughs> chat Alexa. with oh. me. Keep setting off marks. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> 2017 winner, sounding board from the University of Washington in Seattle. When you're done, say stop. Yeah, I, I've done Hi. this. Hi, this is an Alexa Prize social bot. How are you doing today? <laughs> uh, not too good. I have a cold, and there's fog outside. Yeah, not so great. But, you know, it'll get better. Sorry, I didn't hear your voice. <laughs> <laughs> Please say popular topics. That's what we'll get to. Uh, okay, well, that's enough. Tell her to shut the, lot, Alexa. Alexa, shut the fuck up. My uh, new phone doesn't have a button. Alexa, stop. And and if and if you and I use it uh, uh, very that. often. Would you, you say, like to Alexa, get to know stop. <laughs> You say, "Hey Siri," and then you ask it how to spell something. You know, my spelling is so poor. Yeah. But did, um, did we did we actually by saying Alexa set off Mark's? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> how how great? Tell me, Mark. How great is is the Echo? It's really terrific. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it's, did, I, did I just hear that the one Bree did say, I'd like to get to know you? <laughs> yeah, well, no, you can add, you yes. say, you say, yeah. Echo. Well, if that's the case, then that's what we get for Harvey Weinstein for Christmas. <laughs> 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 But no, it, it, I, it, do you ever get that that feeling, Mark, that when you were a kid, you know, you talk thought about the world of the future, you and, know, uh, and you would have this thing. This is the Echo Tap. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, the small one. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. No, but he, what Video I'm video. saying is, when you were a kid, I dreamed about this, you know. And now I've got this thing in my kitchen that talks to me. It'll chat with me. And if I had the the thing set up, it would turn the lights on and off and turn the mm. TV set on and off. Were your dreams wet? <laughs> no, because in this case, I'd get a terrible shock. Yes, yeah, Jason. No, no. So I ended up buying a, an Alexa dot for, uh, do you know what, do you ever hear of the white elephant, you know, Christmas yeah. dealing? Can Is it wrong to steal your own gift back? <laughs> I don't think so. Why, do you like, that, do you like it? 
Well, that's what I was. I kind of wanted one, and I bought it. You know, you know half something? for this you, white you know elephant something? Christmas exchange. But then, pardon me, I want it. So I was thinking, man, if it gets to me, can I steal it back from somebody? The, 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 yeah, full, the full, back because they don't mark them right. The full the size George Echo. Company. The full, full size Echo sells somewhere uh, between uh, seventy nine and sixty nine dollars, depending on when they're trying to sell it like crazy. Yeah, but, and, uh, and I'm he, telling you, it's worth you. every fucking penny. It really hey, Jason, is. This is good. Right? What? Yeah, from <laughs> India, so I can be an Indian giver? <laughs> no, no, it's an Alexis dot. <laughs> yeah. It's a, dot. It, there's a smaller one. Does it have a speaker in it, the dot? Does it have yes. a speaker, too? Yeah, yeah, but it's just not as yeah. good sounding as the speakers. And, and then I subscribe to Amazon for $4 a month for their all the music you can eat, anything from from Amazon. It's and I, I just say, like, uh, you know, Alexa, play Johnny Mercer. And then uh, play nothing but Johnny Mercer or play Frank Sinatra or play. I, Alex. I, yeah. You could not, well, your previous employer I can now listen to also. Yeah, serious? Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's included I, with I, that $4 a month one? Or yeah, I, have a I, I still have a subscription, but I can't remember my password. <laughs> they, they, gave me, they gave me a subscription there, and they never got rid of it. I so don't why do you have to pay four dollars extra a month? Because I have Amazon Music with my Amazon Prime. But no, you, there's no, a the, this, well, that, the Prime only gives you X a finite number of song music. This is you, anything it, that Amazon sells. Yeah, huh. it, it's their version of Apple Music. So I mean, I could ask for something really old, and it probably has it would play it for me. Amazon sells uh, organic avocados. They'll they'll do that. What? Bought, All avocados are organic. No, no, they're not. But uh, they bought Whole Foods. So he says it's anything Amazon sells. The, yeah, yeah. No, it's music, music, music. Well, you're talking about music. I thought that was a new band or something. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, you, know, you just say play the Almond Brothers, and it'll, it'll play the Almond Brothers. Organic avocados. I just, I just think, it, and I have it in the kitchen. I, I didn't know what to think That's of it until I put know. it in the kitchen, and then I found that, like, when I'm cooking, I say, you know, timer eight minutes. Yeah, and then when the timer goes off, I can hear it anywhere in this this gigantic apartment here, in the back room. It's a very large tone. Uh, you can also have it wake you up, and it has a good tone to wake you up. Yes, uh, Mark. You can also call people. Yes. Yeah, my mother's. Yeah, my mother I've, I've called. Call, I've called Marjorie. I've yeah. If you have, uh, I, yeah. I did the same thing you did, Alex. I put the Echo Show in the kitchen. So, I like it because I'm eating breakfast or whatever. Well, you got I the you, 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 you got the show right with the video and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So you don't have to have anything extra special or anything—a a separate account for your Amazon uh, yeah. Echo or anything. Just tell it to call somebody. You you if you have it in your phone book, uh, you, you know you you. Just so say, it's using your phone. Or? Yeah, you can do that. No, it's yeah. it, it's yeah. using itself to call. In other words, yeah. I have Marjorie listed in there, her phone number, and and, and uh, I just say call Marjorie, and it it calls her, and it's through the uh, through the uh, Amazon thing. Yeah, um, so so like on Marjorie's phone, what does that show up as on the caller ID? Spam. I have no idea. I've never I've never looked, and I don't call that much using it because I can use my iPhone. Oh, I use it all the time, Alex. Really? When your number shows up, Alex, yeah. on Marjorie's phone, it says spam. <laughs> Alex, yes. you want me to call you right now? Wait a minute, w William. What? W William. Yes. Uh, uh, you had uh, your hand up. Hold on a second, Bree. Yes, you had your hand up. Okay. Yeah, not to brag, but Cortana does the same thing. Cortina. Oh, Cortana. Cortana. Oh, Cortana. Is that what it's called? It's on. It's yeah. Windows, yeah. right? That's Windows. Yeah. Yeah. I think Amazon will come out Back with. Up. A wrist mounted mounted one of these things oh, oh, by the way by the way every time it, you know marjorie used to write down on a little piece of paper what she needs from costco now oh, she simply talks it into alexa and then when i'm at yeah. costco i go to my alexa app and it yeah. has all the things on the list that we both yeah, put in cool. yeah uh, oh yeah so i mean it gives you hints yeah, on like that. Yeah. last year uh echo and this was last year was the number one electronic gift for the season. And I bet you it does it even more so this year. Yeah, I was well, pissed I bought one for... It's really cool. What were you saying, uh, Jason? I was, I was pissed I bought one for $39, and then like a month later they're coming out for $29 for the same one. Yeah, you, know, you can probably get a hold of uh, Amazon and say, uh, I want uh, the difference in price back and money back. Yes, Bree. Yeah. Bree has his hand up. 
Oh, no, I'm waving. I'm saying I'm hello, I'm here. But you want me to, I can call you. I can try to call you. Use the, but I think we have a full house. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and plus, you don't so, know. So has anybody heard anything about the Google thing? The Google gizmo? Oh, uh, oh, the Google, you know what it is? It, tell me about it. Uh, Google always is the second one to the party. They always yeah. wait for somebody to invent something, and then they come out with their not as the good copy. version of the same thing. Yeah. And, Why did the head of Google step down the other day? Um, he was it sexual assault thing or no? I think I think he didn't. He just quit because he was quitting. No, because uh, he's still he's still staying in the company. I thought it was, I, I thought of something about he just said he wasn't relevant or something. Yeah, he's still like the CEO of the company. He's just yeah, not. He's uh, no longer the president or something. He, I, right. I just he's, he's still staying with technology something or whatever because it, it wasn't Google. It was Alphabet, right? Yeah, and uh, Google is, but he said something about it like he wasn't what, relevant. What is Al What is Al What is Alphabet though? Uh, Alphabet is the parent company of Google. And yeah, what do they? When what do they do? They Nothing. own everything. They just Google. Google. Yeah, massive it, it dynamic. Was, yeah, probably a tax reason they separate their company up into well, Google and Alphabet and. We just have a short time left here, and we do have Santa, and we're putting him to complete waste because I think we have all this bunch of uh, young boys here tonight who want to ask Santa for a gift. So <laughs> I thought I'd start with Phil. Phil, ask, uh, hop on Santa's knee. All, all right. right. Uh, Santa, I want a way to silence Alex when I want to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Poof, you have a mute button. <laughs> oh, poof, you have a mute button. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mike, well, you can hop on Santa's lap and tell him what you want for Christmas. I want the same thing for uh, <laughs> Phil. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> well, well, okay. Only one mute button to a customer. <laughs> Too bad. Uh, Mark? I want that magic Monty Python 16-ton weight that I can drop on anyone. <laughs> there you go. Or, or uh, a superpower, and I, I'm ripping this off from Evan Dorgan. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I want that power. <laughs> uh, but Tony, well, you haven't talked to Santa in years, but now here's your chance to ask. Tell him what you want for Christmas. I'm gonna go for the moon. Can I just get about for a main? What? Yeah. What happened? He froze. I'm, I'm, <laughs> He got excited. He he, he froze. <laughs> What's wrong? It just you guess, My mother feels better. She's a little better. Yeah, no, when the guy finally had a chance to meet Santa, and then he froze. He froze. Now wait a minute. You froze there. What we? What do you want from Santa? Oh, my mother's legs are doing pretty good. So hopefully Santa can make the year good for her legs because her leg was feeling a little better. Uh, right come on. I'm okay. being honest. She did awesome. Okay, so, oh, so Santa, she, basically she, what Tony is saying, he's more You're conflating people. Santa with God. He wants a leg Saint up. Tony. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Bree, Bree, what, what do you want to ask? What, 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 hey, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Bree, what do you want to ask Santa for? Are you there, Bree? I want to, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, Lots of interference today. I want a I want a magic handkerchief, so I can blow my nose and then I snap it in the air and it becomes clean again. <laughs> well, not ah. right okay. You know something? That's that, that's something for Apple to work on. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it's the Phoenix. Phoenix. <laughs> the handkerchief. Phoenix. Uh, yes. Uh, now, Jason, hop on Santa's hey. knee and tell him what you want for for Christmas. Can I get the Mega Millions winning numbers? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Three seven two five nine. You'll you'll never know until next year if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, William, hop on Santa's knee. Well, my Christmas list is short this year. I just want three things. First, I want a million dollars in cash. Oh. Secondly, I want the souls of everyone who have displeased me and a kitten. <laughs> and a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> we can put that all in the bag. You know. The one thing I learned being a Santa is you don't promise anything. <laughs> That's right. And and, uh, and and Jeff, hop on Santa's uh, knee. You're right next right. to him. I'm right on your knee now. <laughs> I am the first thing that pops up. What, what do you want? I am very hoping that on, on Christmas, that instead of taking 10 hours, 
I think about two hours would be enough. It's yeah. taking ten hours, two hours to of what? what? Uh, of the the typical family stuff. About oh, I Christmas. see. Okay. In other words, it, yeah. it won't take ten hours. It'll take like an hour, and you're out of there. That's right. Yeah. Do, do you find that a chore? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Santa, what do you want from yourself? He's trying to skip out on his this year. <laughs> hop on Alex's lap and tell yeah, me. Hop what on you my want. lap, Santa, and tell me what you want. Some pork sausage. <laughs> some yeah, pork. Huh? What what is that we're looking at in uh, Dubai? That's uh ice cream it looks like. It's Google Show. Oh, it's that's Google Show. Or uh, 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 Amazon, Amazon Show. Show. I thought about getting it, but they're coming out with another one, which is just, it's like a clock radio, and it has a, it has a screen and everything. The spot. The spot. It looks That looks pretty cool, actually. So one uh, guy's got the dot. The other guy's got the spot. Yeah. I've He's got, got a ball. I, and I, I, I just discovered this morning I have the rot. So, I was you know, just going to say, Alex oh, Bennett's got the rot. <laughs> I've got the rot. I'm slowly rotting away, you know. And it's, so, it's, Bree, do they conflict with each other when you say, hey, Alexa? Yeah, one will take charge, and the others will then go silent. Oh, okay. Oh, really? I is have them all. Call, they know how to shut up. one they make. Is your calling card uh, some triple cream cheese? <laughs> oh, he went there. Wow. <laughs> really, he went there. Yeah. He went there. Wow. <laughs> Well, you know, my, oh, I didn't. I didn't get, keep doing that. I didn't give get give my wish, Santa. I want millions and millions of listeners to to Gabnet. Yes, okay. that'd be a good. Thing. You know, but first I have to learn how to use social media. Anyway, <laughs> you know. or hey, some Lexapro. Yeah, you know, there there's the theme. Uh, you know, we're taking uh, a week off, uh, uh, which I'm looking forward to, oddly enough. But uh, I want to thank everybody, uh, those who are here and those who are not here, who have been part of the Citizen Panel over the last year and have shown that this concept really does work. Uh, and, uh, and all the people who listen and have been uh, writing letters and have been really fans of this whole thing, I thank you for your participation as well. It, you know, it's, it's a rough thing to do. It's fraught with depression because things don't work and because it's technology. But it's always worth it when I hear somebody say, hey, I really enjoy what you're doing, and I thank you for that. Thanks to Phil. Thank you, Phil. You're really a much better guy than anybody would believe, and I know it personally. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much. Mark, you've been, a, you've been part of this thing since the beginning, and we appreciate that. So is Tony. Bree, we love having you on because you're from a place far, far away where you can say anything and we can't get you. Uh, Jason, been a, been a guy has been calling this show every time his wife will let him, and we thank him for that. Thank you so much. You have no idea how much I, I thank you for that. William, thank you for calling tonight. Let's hear from you some more. Jeff, okay, sir. Jeff, you're, you're a regular who we just, you know, absolutely adore. And, of course, Kevin, you know, thanks for being Santa Claus and thanks for being Kevin and for joining us all year. Would everybody out there give a nice big wave goodbye for the last of the year to our audience out there? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, there they are. That's the uh, Citizens Panel. Let me uh, get my camera on here. And there we are. Uh, that's it uh, for tonight. Uh, that's it for the year. We're taking next week off, and then we'll be back on January 2nd with more of this insanity, uh, and meaning that we keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same result, and uh, uh, we hopefully we'll get even more results next year. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, Amy and Jack, or Jack and Amy, are next with the intersection followed by connections which are now not they're not running commercials on connections anymore so give it a listen it's a fun program they're fun people and i thank everybody who has been on gabnet whether it's damien or whether it's the franchise mc or whether it's uh, uh, jack and amy or uh, whether it's me uh, whether it's connections for having been part of this uh, huge experiment this year and we'll hopefully see them all in the next year and things will get even better maybe we'll even grow the family 
I'm Alex Bennett. Have a happy holiday season. Be have a safe and sound new year, and we'll see you on the second. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, I really do. <laughs> <laughs>